So uh, welcome to the uh, Young Surgeon Symposium on Business Management. Uh, Keith Humes is uh, joining us, uh, CEO of Rosemont Media, and is going to talk to us about uh, marketing strategies for the young spine surgeon. Thank you. Hey, good afternoon, everyone. How many of you all have a website for your practice? Show of hands there. Oh, great. Cool. So everybody knows um, the importance of your website, and especially in attracting new patients to your practice. It's a big part of your reputation as well. Um, you know, um, patients may hear about your word of mouth, but then they go to the web and research um, you further. Um, again, I've been marketing with dentists and surgeons for over 20 years now, so I've seen a big change. Um, seen also a big shift. I, I primarily was involved with web marketing for elective health care, and now I'm seeing more and more businesses that re are relying on reimbursed health care now wanting a better web presence and a prettier looking website because it does. Uh, it is an important part of the practice. Um, again, my disclosures are we're partnered with uh, Yex, which is a location management tool, and we're also partnered with Google. We're a premier Google partner. Um, so I'm going to talk about website development. Again, my goal here today is to cram an hour of information into 15 minutes. I'll see how I do here. Um, but I'm going to touch on website development, a very important part uh, of the whole process. It's essentially your foundation of your web strategy. And responsive website design is kind of the standard now. And so what responsive website design is, is essentially one design that lives under one domain name and fits multi-screens. So it works on all screens because it's very important that you're optimized for, for many different screen types. And so here's an example of the same website that sizes down, down to a tablet size, and now you can see it's sized down to a phone size. Again, this is one website that, that works, again, with, with um, different screens. So early on when I started in web development for mobile, it was a really exciting time. Obviously, the advent of, of the iPhone really kicked off mobile marketing. Now we're starting to see 70% of users are actually on mobile devices now. The traffic's going through the roof on mobile. So early on when we started developing for mobile, we developed um, a website, a main website, and then it sized down to an M dot. Well, how you got to the mobile version was through a mobile detect. And so it detected the device you were on and then reacted. So we've gone full circle and now it's reacting to screen sizes as opposed to devices because it got to a point where there were so many devices that were coming out that it was impossible to program the websites to react to these different devices. And so now that's why responsive is the best way to go because you just have to develop on one site and keep one site updated. Before it was, you know, the, before you have a mobile version that you had to keep updated independently from your desktop. So it became a huge hassle to keep both of those, all those different versions updated. So that's why this is the really great way to go. Um, so when we talk about, I'm a big advocate of custom website development, a lot of templates out in the marketplace, but I think for your business, the way to go is really custom development because in, in marketing and branding, you want to have a unique brand that makes you stand out in the marketplace. If you have the same website that your competitor has down the street, you're not going to stand out. You're not going to be different from the crowd. So branding is a, is a really important part of the whole process of web development. And you get, you have, there's a lot more flexibility um, with a custom website as well. And budget, you kind of think about budget, okay? You know, it's easy to get into a template website, again, because it's off the shelf, it fits everyone, you change out a couple pictures and bam, you got yourself a website. But there's always ongoing fees that are involved with a template website. A lot of times when you start adding up those template fees, ongoing fees, because usually monthly fees, anywhere from 200 to $500 a month. When you start adding up those fees over time, I think what you're going to find is if you pay a little bit more upfront, you get yourself a custom website, it's yours, you also own it, it becomes an asset of your practice rather than a payment. And I've been part of many business sales of practices in both dentistry and, and, and surgical um, practices as well. And the website becomes sometimes more of a valuable asset than any of your equipment that you may have in your office because it's generating patients. Um, and again, the content, everything about it is part of your um, practice. So again, um, you know, be weary when you're getting involved with the website. If you bought a custom website, it was being portrayed as a custom website, and the turnaround time is very quick, be weary of that because a custom website takes time. It's actually, you know, built, all the pages are built by hand. They're all coded out based on the custom design that you have. So if you're getting a custom website that's turned around in a month, you may want to be weary um, whether that's an actual template or not. Um, 
So the content is a big part of search engine optimization. Again, I could talk for hours just on search engine optimization. But when you look at a website, the most important part is creating potent content, good content, so that you become the expert in your marketplace. And that's really the driver of search engine optimization. So here's an example here. This is a dentistry search here, Portland Veneer, San Diego. This is an actual page that I found on page 100 or something under this search. This is all there is to that page. So when you think about search engine optimization, if you want to compete in the marketplace, you're going to have to create a web page that has much more robust content. So here's a page, again, uh, on porcelain veneers that is much more robust, tells a story, um, gives you all the information, has a video with a patient telling about their experience. You tell me, again, looking at the other page, looking at this page, which page would you index under that competitive search more? Again, you're going to you're going to index the page that has more robust content. Google loves content. You want to feed the bot. That's basically what you're trying to do with search engine optimization. There's really fancy ways of looking at search engine optimization, but at the end of the day, the goal with search engine optimization is to turn your website into a resource for your patients who are doing research on the procedures that you're providing and to position yourself as an expert for that specific procedure. Site speed is another huge thing. So again, what Google talks about since day one, since I started working with Google in 1999, is they're all about the user experience. And they want to create a good user experience for those that are going to Google. That's how Google makes money, by selling ads. And so if they're not giving a good user experience, then people will stop coming to Google. So one of the huge things is website speed, especially on mobile. So you want to make sure that your website is loading fast. I'll give you a great place to go to test your website speed. It's called gtmetrics.com. This is where this test was taken here. You can plug your, your website in there and it'll tell you how fast your website loads. Many factors on website speed, server um, optimization is huge, as well as the development of the site, how the site's put together, how the images are compressed. That's what you're paying for with a custom website is to make sure that it's going to pass all these tests and you can always you know, tweak it and evolve it and change it. But website speed is a huge ranking factor. Just this year, they're rolling it out as we speak. They, they, they're rolling out a new index, which is called Google Mobile First. And what they're doing is they're ranking, whether you're on a desktop or you're on a mobile device doing searches, they're ranking websites based on your mobile website now. So wherever you go on Google, your placement on your desktop, you do a desktop search, is going to be based on your mobile and what you're doing on mobile. So it's turning into a mobile first world uh, with marketing for websites. So mobile is the first thing that you should be looking at when you're developing your site as well. Think about what you want on your mobile site first, because you can always expand and go bigger on your desktop, which is really nice. Um, but mobile is really a big factor and really um, where you want to go. So there's a couple quick takeaways on SEO. You want to create potent content. You also want to look at duplicate content. You don't want to take content from your buddy um, who's in another market, because that's just not the way you're going to make your website a resource. Dupe content is the number one no-no on Google. You need to create unique content. That's why there's a value to good content, because duplicate content is a big no-no. So you want to make sure you also have ongoing content marketing plan. You want to expand your pages over time. You don't have to create the biggest, greatest page your first round. You want to have a system and plan to develop that page over time, because that adds more value. And then it keeps you um, ongoing and competitive in, in the rankings as well. Um, and, um, you know, links are a big part. You know, again, I could talk more on links, but you want to have some uh, strategy of, of link monitoring. When I go back to dupe content, talk about duplicate content, um, it's interesting because not only uh, you have an issue of you taking somebody else's content and putting it on your website um, or working with a developer that may have stolen somebody else's content, you also have an issue of people stealing your content which we deal with that a lot. So people will say, your content's really nice. You spend a lot of money on your content. And somebody steals your content. And they're getting better ranking than you because Google's giving credit to them as authoring that content. So it goes both ways. So that's why you have to make sure you're doing annual content, do content checks. And if somebody does steal your content, then you have to go out and contact them and say, hey, take my content down. That's mine. It's been copyrighted to me. So that's a big part of what we do. We do annual content checks all the time make sure the content that we have for our customers is unique and that nobody else has stolen that content as well. And again, I touched on speed. Speed, speed is a really important part of, we of website these days. It's, it's going to be one of the number one factors for ranking um, as time moves on here. Um, again, you need to ask yourself that question over again. Is my website a resource for the procedures that I'm providing? 
Direct Ad Buys, Google AdWords, I'm just gonna touch on this briefly. Um, you wanna try to go with a Google Premier Partner. Google Premier Partners, is only, it only represents about 3% of the agencies in North America, but these are the agencies that Google has hand-selected um, because of a lot of variables, a lot of factors, such as how many campaigns have they managed, the longevity of accounts, um, the ad spend that they're handling. You know, their goal and our goal as an agency is to make AdWords work for you. Um, the other issues can be budget. You may go with a company that's gonna charge you $1,000 a month, but then they're only spending $200 with Google and they're pocketing the other 800. So the other problem with, with that is that you wanna know exactly what are you spending directly on Google. Um, so when we do ad buys, we're very transparent. Our clients know exactly what they're spending with Google, and that's a very important part. Um, because Google will get calls. They say, hey, I'm spending $1,000 a month with this ad agency. Google AdWords doesn't work. Well, then they look at that agency and find out, actually, they're only spending 200 and, and so Google obviously gets a bad rap because they're not getting the full budget that they saw, thought they were they're spending, so the, the practice doesn't think that AdWords works, which obviously is something that Google doesn't want. Um, so make sure that your account is also portable. So if you do have an AdWords account set up by an agency, you wanna make sure that your AdWords account is set up in your name. All of your Google suite of products um, including your analytics, your Google My Business, which I'm gonna to touch on here today as well. All those things should be housed under your name, under your practice name, so that those things are portable. Um, because the data is so important. If you're spending good money on AdWords to promote your, your procedures, you wanna have that longevity of, of history of ad spend, and without that data, you don't know when you're starting from scratch again. So that data is very important um, when you're talking about Google AdWords. Um, so again, I touched on uh, make sure it's set up under your practice name, go with a Google Premier Partner. Of course, you want to also track the emails. You want to have some sort of system to track emails and phone calls because you'll never know because we usually see the majority of leads that come in are actually via the phone rather than email. Um, so if you're not analyzing your traffic, analyzing the quality of the visits, then you'll never know whether AdWords is working for you. Um, obviously, very important, online reviews, local optimization. Um, has anybody heard of the term citations, citation management, the term NAP, name, address, phone number? So that's all what citations are. They're your NAP, name, address, phone number. Really big part on the web to make sure that's standardized. The problem now in the web is there are just tons and tons of directories out there. I'm sure you guys have seen it. You do searches under your name. There's health grades, there's RAID MDs, there's um, your organization that you're part of, there's your practice, there's your web page, there's all kinds of things that are now come up under your name. The foundation for your citations and your NAP is Google My Business. It's also the foundation for your SEO strategy with your website. If your Google My Business page or Google Local, it's gone through many changes in names, is not tied to your website, your website will not perform well on the search ends at all. It's also places where your reviews are housed under your name, under your practice name. It's free still. You know, so many of you have seen this. You do a search for a practice name. This is a dental uh, practice example, a local one here in La Jolla. Um, and again, this is where reviews are found. Um, so this is what people are looking for your name. They're gonna find this. So you need to make sure this is optimized and tied to your website properly. The other thing on mobile is people are gonna call from your, their mobile device. They're on a mobile phone, they're doing searches. It's really easy to hit the call button there. And Google's tracking this stuff. And so what we have found is there's been a big uptick in activity on Google My Business through the phone, and not only for name searches, as you can see here, and we're seeing this in majority, is that not only are name searches being searched, but discovery as well. So you'll see here that direct is much smaller than discovery, discovery searches. So discovery searches are spinal surgeon, spinal doctor, um, you know, orthopedic surgeon, orthopedic doctor, those type of searches the map listing also comes up under Google My Business as well. Um, so it's very important that you understand um, that you look at the insights and see what role Google My Business is playing for your practice. Because you're gonna find here that there's a lot of calls that are coming through Google My Business that aren't trackable through your traditional analytics if you're not taking a look here. But also people looking for directions, requesting your website, a lot of activity going on here through Google My Business. And again, as I said, there's just hundreds and hundreds of places now where your name is found. And people are vying for your name because the other thing is that most, a lot of the searches on the web are doctor related. And so people, I mean, businesses want to grab 
That's why these businesses exist. That's why health grades exist. That's why ZocDoc exists, because they're, they're monetizing themselves under doctor name searches. So you better make sure that you're taking advantage of these different sites and that you are claiming these different sites that are out there. The best way to do that these days is through a location or citation management tool. One of the popular ones and the ones that we're partnered with is called Yext. And what that does for you, it allows you to manage all of your locations, your business name, and have it be uniform and organized in one place rather than trying to manage 100 different listings across the web. So this is a very essential tool, and this is not going to get any easier. Every day there's new websites out there. And, you know, there's ones that you've heard of. Apple, of course, you know, but there's ones that you haven't heard of as well. Um, but, again, if these are off in any way, then it can be off in other places, and it really doesn't help your search engine optimization. Um, again, reviews are huge. Reviews are, are, are the gold now, the new gold standard uh, in healthcare, and it's really an important part of the practice. Early on in my career, I was telling people they needed to check their email. And, you know, back in the early 2000s, I, we would monitor people, and they would go five days sometimes without checking email. So I feel that the practices are now really good at answering the phone, answering emails. Now the new thing is that integrating reviews into the daily routine of the practice is very important. So when you think about getting reviews for your practice, you need to ask for reviews. You need to try to gain reviews, because if you get a bad review, then what are you going to do? There's always that chance. Bad reviews are always going to happen. There's also a report um, out, the Stanford report, the positive, re the positive effect of a negative review. So if you have 80 great reviews and then one bad review, well, people are actually going to think that your reviews are legitimate because they're seeing one bad review. Not every single person can be happy. But if you have a strategy to gain positive reviews proactively, then you're going to be in a better shape if you do get that one negative review. So again, you want to prepare. Have a plan for your, for your, with your practice, within your practice, execute and reward and sustain. So what I mean by reward, uh, one of the things that we've done, I've done with my staff and I tell um, the practices I work with as well, is to re reward your staff for getting good reviews for the practice. So one of the things I did is throw $10 bills up on the board. Every time one of my, one of my sales reps got a good review from my customers, they would take that $10 off the board and put it in their pocket and go get lunch that day. So not really, you don't want to reward the patients or incentivize the patients by giving them money, but rather give your staff a little perk and make it part and talk about it, you know, and, and, and ask how many reviews the practice is able to get. And it's really important to talk about reviews um, when the patients are happy. You know, that's a great time to do it. Of course, you can send out email. We've seen very little return on trying to get a review through an email. People just kind of ignore it. However, mobile has been huge, mobile review generation. So again, here's how it goes. Jay, you had a great experience at our practice? Great. Reviews are a very important part of our practice. Would you mind writing us a quick review? I'm going to send you a quick text message. Bam. Goes right to your phone. The next thing, you click on that. It says, you know, did you receive ex exceptional care? You click on that link. It takes you right. So I've only basically three clicks, and I'm right into the review section. I'm in the office. I'm on a mobile device. I can click five stars right then and there. It's in the trenches. That's how you're going to get great reviews. Reviews drive the business these days. People look at reviews to make decisions on what doctor they're going to go to. And mobile and talking to patients has been the way. There's no real big way to automate reviews and gaining reviews. It's really through talking to your patients and trying to get it on site in the practice when they're happy. So it's a great way to go. And of course, if you're gaining reviews, you want to make sure you monitor reviews. And then you want to make sure that you show your reviews, your great reviews on your website and put it throughout your site. Have some way to display those reviews. Um, so again, um, Google My Business is, is the foundation of local. Um, consider a location management tool. It really does save time. Have a plan to generate reviews, display re reviews, and broadcast reviews on your website. Social media marketing, really just going to touch on there. Be really quick here, but you want to be consistent in your brand so you don't want to have a different name on your Facebook page that you have on your website. Let's keep all your branding consistent. Um, again, try not to automate your social media marketing. You're really not getting any, any engagement. You can clearly tell on your page. Um, if you don't see interaction, you don't see likes, you don't see comments, well, your social media strategy is most likely not working. Just throwing, generate, or just having reviews streaming onto your page is not a strategy. And then also having an automated feed about healthcare stuff that's not related to your business is also not a good strategy as well. If you want to come up with a good editorial 
calendar, have a plan, um, execute that plan with a good, good strategy, and try to create engaging posts that are related to your business and, and monitor for um, engagement. Of course, unless you're side, then it's very difficult to create viral content. It's impossible. Um, so one of the areas with Facebook that works really well is paid promotions. That's really what's going to get you in front of people. Facebook is a huge billboard. You got to think about Facebook as a huge billboard with thousands of cars driving down the freeway. But you can create your own freeway by demographically targeting the patients that are typically in your demographic. So you can fine tune the marketing to get to those demographics of people that you're looking for. Um, again, keep your brand, uh, keep branding consistent, skip automation, have an editorial calendar. Again, promoted posts are key. And you want to really monitor uh, for engagement um, as well on your social page. Um, it's not working. Email marketing is one of the still most cost effective way. Just like you go responsive with your website, you don't want to go responsive with your email marketing. You want to make sure that your emails work on all types of different devices. Um, if it's not optimized for mobile, most likely going to hit the delete button. 60 to 70 percent of people also check their email via their phone. So if it's not optimized for the phone, it's really easy just to hit the delete button. All right. Um, again, email marketing, it's, it's a great way to go. Um, you want to make sure you have great segmented lists, um, you know, so that you can send out um, targeted emails based on your segmented list. Um, and again, have a website subscribe form as well. Tracking reporting. Google Analytics is the foundation for your tracking. You want to make sure, again, that your Google Analytics is set up in your name, under your account, just as any of your other Google products like AdWords, Google My Business. It's all together. It's portable. Whatever company you work with, you want to make sure that you can extract that. If you want to leave that company, you want to make sure it's all set up under your name. Um, email tracking is a great way to go. Um, you should also consider trying to understand where the email leads are coming from. So if you can track those on the front end when the leads are coming in, then you can dump those into your practice management software. It's a great way to go. Um, call tracking is a central way, especially if you're engaged in any type of advertising on the web like AdWords. Um, this is actually called, sorry, this is a little blurry, but this is actually called DNI tracking, which is dynamic number insertion uh, call tracking. So what that does is tracks the patient's journey. So a lot of times patients may start out by typing in uh, organic search or free search, maybe your doctor's name or something, and then they may come back and type in, you know, spinal doctor, orthopedic surgeon. Um, so you want to make sure that you're tracking that user for their whole journey, and that's what the, the the call tracking actually tracks users as opposed to just one. Okay. All right, and that's it. Some questions here for agencies. You just want to make sure that you own the website. You want to talk about those things. Who owns analytics? Who owns AdWords? Um, uh, when you're looking at a company, how long will website development take? Will the hosting be included as an extra fee? Um, again, will my content be unique or original? Again, co do content is huge. Um, and then how will um, SEO efforts be tracked and reported? Who will be my point of contact? That's what you want to make sure you're asking and that you're going to work with that person as well. We'll wrap it up here. Thank you. Thanks, Keith.